Imagine a world where the very tools we create to make us smarter could paradoxically make our brains less functioning. Let's take a puzzle so complex that it stumped scientists for over 50 years. This was one of the greatest challenges of biology. This wasn't just academic, it held the key to understanding diseases, developing life-saving drugs, and unraveling the mysteries of life itself. This was the protein folding problem. Proteins are the building blocks of life and performing countless functions in our bodies. Unlike mass or chess, where the rules are well defined, protein folding has utmost complexity and uncertainty in biology. In order for us to understand them, we need to understand them 3D structure. And for years, Developing and understanding these structures took several years for a single protein, and it was a very painstaking process. Enter DeepMind's AlphaFold 2. In 2020, this AI system shocked the scientific world because it solved the protein folding problem with near perfect accuracy. It could predict the structures of a protein within hours, sometimes minutes and the impact was immediate and profound. By 2022, AlphaFold had predicted almost all known proteins for over 200 million from bacteria to human, and today is being used to study cancer, Alzheimer's, antibiotic resistance, or even to create enzymes, so it could be able to break down environmental pollutants like plastics. So this story, isn't just about a computer winning a game. This is a testament how AI can enhance human intelligence and open new frontiers in scientific discovery and also offer hope for some of our most pressing global challenges. But do we humans pay a price for it all? Today, AIs can write essays or compose symphonies or also pass professional exams, but as these systems grow more powerful, research actually suggests that our own cognitive skills might be quietly eroding in exchange. A 2025 Swiss Business School study showed that increased AI reliance actually has a link to diminished critical thinking abilities and um, yeah, because we stop engaging our brains in uh, deep reflective thinking processes. Other studies researched AI hallucinations. These are when AI very, very convincingly states completely false information. I hope you all noticed that too, because it's super important. And these hallucination rates can differ based on the query, but we noticed in our work, so when it comes to legal queries, the hallucination rates can be up to 60 to 80% in some cases. And actually, I, of course, asked AI for help with this talk, and the hallucination rates when it came to these cognitive studies were 100%. Everything was made up. Newspapers, statistics, they, everything. Um, and um, these studies also showed that the AI actually hinders the development of problem-solving abilities and the effective communication case, which can lead to weakened um, ability for us to perform independent analysis and interpretation. So these findings are both alarming and intriguing. As we marvel, at the intelligence of machines. Are we losing our own? I found the EU's first ever interdisciplinary virtual law firm, and for over a decade, I've been working in the intersection of technology, business, and law. So the fields which not only require te technical expertise, but also the ability to connect dots within disciplines. Because um, when I create interdisciplinary legal and business strategies for companies, 
then I have to solve very complex problems using different um, insights from these fields altogether. And I also witnessed firsthand how the very unique human traits like intuition or creative thinking or um, creativity um, can um, uh, drive innovation forward. And one of our greatest challenges is actually hiring. So how to find lawyers with this complex skill set? And since I am the CEO, so ultimately I have to deal with this gross issue, I started to dig deeper. And another reason I'm standing here now is that I get the question at every AI conference that, okay, you know what? You know, people try to provoke me a little bit. Say, you know what? Are we even going to be needing lawyers in the future? Or AI is just going to take over? Well, I'm convinced we do. And it's also why I started to research intelligence for several years, but not just as an abstract concept, but also a lived experience. And um, as it turns out, by Mensa, which is an international organization for individuals with, for high IQs, I've come to understand that intelligence is not just about performing well on tests or solving puzzles. It's also about adaptability, emotional depth, and also the ability to see connections where others see chaos. So this is why I'm standing here today, to explore how AI potentially redefines human intelligence and the future of thinking. So human intelligence is not a single ability, but a combination of different mental processes working together. And unlike machine or artificial intelligence, which relies on data sets and algorithms, human intelligence integrates several cognitive skills and processes like reasoning, problem solving, memory, language, perception, creativity, or pattern recognition. So let's dig into creativity for a second. Can machines be creative? Creativity is generally defined as the ability to create ideas which are both novel and valuable within a given context. Human creativity relies on intuition, emotion, and learned experiences. AI creativity relies on brute computational power, um, pattern recognition, and um, reinforcement learning. So how does it matter for us? The protein folding problem was a groundbreaking achievement, but AI didn't feel its way to solve the puzzle. It exhibited functional creativity, but it lacks the emotional depth and the contextual understanding and the interdisciplinary thinking, which are key aspects of human creativity. So AI cannot experience creativity the way we do. And here is when it gets interesting. The World Economic Forum lists creativity as one of the top five skills we need to succeed in 2025 along with analytical and critical thinking. And yet, a 2023 study showed that um, when we use AI for decision-making processes, then actually the, the brain and then certain functions, for example, questioning assumptions and also generating novel or new alternative solutions, decreasing. So the brain is not going to be as good as doing those. So these are questioning assumptions, critical thinking, generate alternative solutions, creativity. So AI, the very tool we use to enhance our brains to meet the expectation of the 21st century, might be actually diminishing it. Has this happened before? Let's take a short trip to London. London taxi drivers are renowned for mastering the knowledge. It's a rigorous test requiring them to memorize countless thousands of streets and landmarks. And the study showed that these taxi drivers had an increased activity in their hippocampus, 
which is the brain region responsible for spatial memory and recognition. However, with the advent of GPS, this advantage started to diminish. This is called cognitive offloading. So when we delegate mental tasks to the machines instead of engaging our own brains, and while at first sight, cognitive offloading on the long, short run can be um, more efficient and increasing efficiency, but on the long run, it actually weakens certain cognitive abilities. This is called cognitive offloading paradox. Why? How does the brain work? The brain creates and refines neural pathways by repeated behaviors. So we solve problem. when we solve problems, for example, calculate um, without computer or navigate without the GPS, then these neural circuits activate and strengthen. However, if we don't engage our brains into problem solving, then studies showed that the neural density of the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for problem solving, decreases. And this um, part is also responsible for analytical reasoning, for example. Do you want to hire a lawyer whose brain is not even capable anymore for analytical reasoning? I guess not. So AI, as it automates this task more comprehensively than ever before, also means that um, our engagement, cognitive engagement, declines, so potentially altering our brain structure. So AI can actually shape how our mind works. So technology, again, feels like Pandora's box the story of the unforeseen consequences. Because when Pandora opened her jar, she unleashed chaos to the world, but one thing was left inside, hope. So is this the era of the complete cognitive decline of our brain's functions, or is there hope? There is. Apparently, our brains are remarkable at adapting called neuroplasticity. And since neuroplasticity works in a use it or lose it principle, whether AI actually alters brain structure depends on us. So the key is whether we actively engage with data generated information or passively consume it. A 2022 neuroimage study actually compared brains of individuals who were solving tasks with or without AI, and they um, noticed that those who didn't question the AI outputs, remember the hallucination rates, their cognitive functions in the brain and activity decreased. However, those who actively assessed the AI outputs maintained the same level of brain activity. So the key is that we learn to use AI in a responsible, conscious, and mature manner, while also preserving and fostering our human nature. Hence, the ultimate question is, how do we stay human? AI excels at narrow tasks, but struggles with interdisciplinary and um, complex problem solving because, and again, let's just repeat, it lacks three very important human traits. One, contextual understanding, emotional intelligence, and human creativity. So Leonardo da Vinci excelled because he combined art with science or anatomy with engineering. Could an AI ever replicate such cross-disciplinary brilliance? Unlikely. So the goal is to create a conscious interplay between human and artificial intelligence, and then there is room for both of us. And there is one more thing. We also have 
a secret weapon. If AI threatens our cognitive abilities, science actually points us towards an unexpected ally. Reading high quality literature. Several studies showed that um, reading fiction is actually one of the most efficient way to enhance empathy, critical thinking, and creativity. So intelligence, basically, and why? Because when you read a novel, your brain engages in a whole complex symphony of neural activity. You train your empathy because you immerse in other people's perspective. You train your critical thinking because you have to evaluate motives and different competing viewpoints. And you train your creativity because you are forced, when you read, you're forced to use your imagination by visualizing complete new words and characters based on mere words. And this also increases cognitive flexibility. So these processes increase neural connectivity in different parts of the brain. And as a bonus, you will also increase your memory retention and problem-solving skills. Yet, here lies another contradiction. Even though these skills are more vital than ever in, um, in the AI-driven world, fewer people read than ever before. According to Eurostat, in 2022, there is almost half of EU citizens didn't read a single book in 12 months. Another challenge is that um, we shift focus to new things in every 47 seconds, down from about two and a half minutes within just two decades. And third, very scary, the attention spans are shrinking. So the average human attention span as of 2015 reached 8.25 seconds, which is shorter than of a goldfish with its nine seconds. So let's beat that goldfish, please. And I would like to close with a story about the Greek mythology. So Prometheus, the titan god of four souls, stole the fire and gave it to humanity. It brought light and warmth and the ability to forge tools. But the gods punished Prometheus for his theft and chained him to a rock so that an eagle would eat his liver daily so that the whole process to regenerate and restart. This illustrates the double-edged nature of transformative technologies. They can bring immense benefits, but also unforeseen consequences. We are at a similar juncture, and AI is our modern day fire. Do we want to illuminate our path forward, or do we want it to let it burn down everything we've built so far? True intelligence isn't just about problem solving, it's about meaning, context, and emotion. True creativity isn't just about novel ideas, but it's about connecting them to our shared humanity. And the future of thinking isn't just about competing with AI, but to create a symbiotic relationship where both human and artificial intelligence can thrive. So as we navigate this new era together, let's embrace AI not as a threat, but as a partner. One that challenges us to think deeper, imagine bigger, and remain steadfastly human in everything we do. Thank you.